this this yeah this only that's right yeah 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 that's right yeah
Uh, we're putting it out to all the other fire districts and the fire stations and uh, all the uh, cities around us. So. And Chief, I hope it's okay with you, but I asked uh, the chairman here if he would introduce the speaker. Yes, that's no problem whatsoever. Okay, great. <clears throat> Okay, well, now comes the best part of the meeting, the presentations. Presentations. Tonight we have a Phoenix Award, which is always uh, something good to have. I'll turn it over to Captain Wilson. Uh. Is that a, uh, okay. I'll turn it over to Colin Boston, who can do a different one. Threw him underneath the bus today. Uh, so t every year uh, since we've had Paul Phillips, our uh, train officer who passed away and who you know, really revamped our training division, and so every time that we have a recruit class, they always name the, you know, the top guy, the guy that stands out at the whole class. So tonight I'm going to have C Captain Boston and Captain Wilson announce who this past, when we hired these last five back in March, who our uh, top candidate was. So I'll turn it over to Captain Boston. Good evening. Uh, so tonight I have the privilege of presenting the Paul Phillips Award. Uh, this award is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, as most of you know, uh, Paul had a tremendous impact on the fire service here in Bonita, but not only here in Bonita, all across the county. Uh, I probably wouldn't be working for this department if it wasn't for Paul. Um, so he was a mentor of mine, as, as he was for, I'm sure, uh, quite a few people. Um, so after Paul passed, uh, we wanted a way to keep his memory alive, and not just um, of a way to you know, talk about it, something that had meaning behind it. Uh, so the chiefs and everybody came up with, we established the, uh, the Paul Phillips Award. So it's presented to the person who finishes at the top of their new hire orientation class, someone that exhibits qualities similar to Paul. Uh, some of the uh, words that come to mind are passionate, caring, hardworking, inspiring, and motivating. Uh, so tonight, the Paul Phillips Award goes to Tyler Bess. Uh, Tyler showed all these qualities and more. <laughs> Tyler showed all these qualities and more throughout his orientation. Uh, Tyler came with experience, and as Chief likes to say, we uh, stole him from the city of Naples Fire Department. Um, <laughs> Good job. His peers looked to him as a leader and someone they could rely on constantly throughout his orientation. Uh, and I along with Captain Wilson, uh, you know, have uh, faith that he will continue to show these qualities um, and that he'll, you know, have a, su a successful career here. Uh, so with that being said, uh, the Paul Phillips Award goes to Tyler Bess. Go. Yeah. Good evening. Good. It is with great pride to stand before you to present a Phoenix Award to a few individuals here tonight. A Phoenix Award is an award given to those who have demonstrated exceptional courage and skill in saving a life during critical situations. This award symbolizes their dedication and unwavering commitment to preserving and safeguarding human life. In a moment when every second mattered, they demonstrated exceptional skill, resilience, and compassion, embodying the spirit of the Phoenix rising from the ashes. On March 26th, Lieutenant Paramedic Joe Sanderson, 
Firefighter Paramedic Trainee Bobby Cruz, Firefighter EMT Rob Schmidt on Engine 25, and Paramedic Stan Ball, Paramedic Jason Marchand, and EMT Aaron Larva with Lee County EMS responded to a cardiac arrest. On arrival, they found a 59-year-old male laying on the floor in the kitchen who was receiving chest compressions by two family members. Agent 25's crew and Lee County EMS took over care. They confirmed the patient was in cardiac arrest and assumed chest compressions and began advanced life-saving interventions. One of those interventions included early defibrillation to convert a lethal cardiac rhythm to a normal rhythm. After four defibrillations, the patient regained a pulse. He started to breathe on his own. And when the patient was packaged and moved to the ambulance, his airway had to be removed. He started talking as actually was stating his name. Today, Mr. Bruno Bellavance is alive and well, but unfortunately can't be here tonight. However, he did send a small video to share.
My heart overflowed with gratitude for the overwhelming kindness and I have received from friend, family and even stranger. May we all continue to celebrate life together, knowing that kindness and heroism are always within our reach. Again, I want to say a very big thanks, a very big thank you to the team of EMS in Bonita uh, Spring. Bye-bye and thank you for everything. Sorry for my English. I try the best. I try, I try to do my best. Bye-bye. Very nice. All right, so we'd like to call up Lieutenant Paramedic FTO, Joe Sanderson. <laughs> Firefighter Paramedic Trainee, Bobby Cruz. <laughs> Firefighter EMT, Rob Schmidt. Okay, there we go. And we have one of the EMS individuals here, EMT Aaron Larva. We're going to take a five minute recess for anybody who would like to leave the meeting now. You're welcome to stay, but I know I see a lot of families here that probably would have something better to do right now. Congratulations to all and thank you all so much for coming. Good. Good. Call the meeting back to order. Uh, next item, uh, we need a motion for the uh, disposals report. So moved. A second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Old business, anybody have any? Yes, sir, if no one else does. I wanted to ask the chief uh, and the assistant deputy chief about the heat, how our men and women have been faring. Uh, it's all over the news if you walk outside. Um, are we still following the guidelines? Still following the, the guideline. Uh, again, the uh, battalion chiefs all have it on their phone where uh, if it's over 110, feels like, with the heat index, we stop training, all outside training. Uh, we do have an acquired structure next door at the old Flesher place, and we have ice baths over there uh, starting tomorrow that if anybody gets overheated, we have the proper... Uh, we have the proper uh, things in place to where to cool them down rapidly. And, oh, awesome. Uh, so we've got everything, and then VCs and training still all all have liquid IVs on their on the rigs, and plus we've added it to the assistant chief, deputy chiefs, and myself. So if we roll up on a call with them, and the battalion chief happens to be somewhere else or delayed, we at least have the uh, to get the crews that, also. That's awesome. Have you guys have any had any trouble with any of at, at any of the we calls? We haven't guys had already? any anybody any of our crews go down. Uh, I was listening to a brush fire today. Pine Island did have one of their firefighters go down. They were at a brush fire for I don't know three four hours. And yeah, that'd be had, brutal. Yeah. So I don't I don't know how they do it with the, with the bunker gear. And so and you know do. we've changed a little bit of the way we do things because of the heat right now. So let's. We uh, typically, when we have drivers training, like a guy, a, one of our crew members getting signed off to be a driver engineer, usually the crews are in full bunker gear, pulling lines and doing that. We've reduced it down now to helmet and gloves and pants, so we've reduced that that exposure. It sounds like you got a hand on it. Thank you, sir. I have uh, my monthly question about Tico. Any any work? No, for I've got a feeler out to, and I don't know if I explained this last month or I, I don't think I did only for the fact that I found out about it in my meeting that I had down in Naples the 18th through the 22nd I sit on I'm the liaison for Florida, Florida fire chiefs through the state of Florida's hazmat team or state of state of Florida's hazmat symposium group so I was at the meeting their their yearly meeting business meeting and it got brought up and Gainesville is having the same issue that the the Tico in Gainesville has no idea where their valves are. And he expressed to me that that's common statewide, that they don't know where their shutoff valves are. It doesn't are. mean that it's right. I, I know that, but they, they're, they're dealing with the same issue we are and trying to find it out on a state level now. So, so seeing so how you're, li up you're a liaison the to this group, then maybe you could be part of we pushing this. Been. I that, think we need to, you know, hold Tico's feet to the fire? I don't know. <laughs> to the gas fire? Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's absolutely problem. ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I, we brought it up to the state uh, September the 3rd or 7th and 8th. There is a um, battery class up at the state fire college, and uh, we're going to talk about it. <coughs> well, so. So okay, so it's it's on the, it's on the radar of everybody in the state. Now. Um, is there anybody that we need to talk to as elected people from Tico, or is this uh, better staying at your level until we get to a point? That Let's leave it at our level until we can't. Till All we, right, till it starts that's falling fine, on deaf ears and they're like giving us the brush off. This is like us not knowing where our fire trucks are. Well, I, I, it's or not knowing where the hydrants are at. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's just mind-boggling to me, but. Um, and it doesn't take much, as we all know, for something to go horribly wrong. Yeah. So, thank you for that update. No Anybody problem. else have anything? Uh, new business. Uh, we need a motion uh, to approve the uh, budget transfer. Th uh, three budget transfers. No, no, budget transfer. Budget transfer three. I'm sorry. So moved. Lisa never correct the chairman. <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Chief, you got the floor. So, it brings me great pleasure. 27 is open. Station 27 is open. We moved yep. in last Monday. Uh, they slept there Monday night. No ghosts come and got them. No zombies come and got them. They made it through the night, and they're still there today. The boat is back operational on the lift, responding to calls. Uh, we've Until the fuel situation gets rectified down there, which we have bids coming back and forth of that right now. Uh, until that gets rectified, I've uh, opened an account with Benita Bay Marina. That would be the closest place to get fuel, and they will bill us you know, on a monthly basis. So we do have a place to get fuel. We don't have to pull the boat out and take it to racetrack or wherever we can get off-road or uh, ethanol-free. So Benita Bay has that. 
So it is still uh, a work in progress. There's still some work getting done down there, but we are able to move in there. We're still getting like the gym equipment you'll see out front. We have gym equipment that just came in today, but it is livable. They have all the amenities that everybody, the cameras are up, AC, cable, computers, mattresses, everything. The only thing they, I don't think that they don't have would be the gym equipment right now and some other, a clock or whatever it may be. Incidental things <laughs> that, that we are either A, waiting on order or B, didn't get at the time like a clock we forgot to get a clock you know so little things like that but they know that where to go get them and they know the stuff's on order so any questions about station 27 tiki is up and running everything got fixed on it Nice Chief, do they have an opportunity to work out somewhere else uh, while they're on duty? Yes, yet? they can go down to Station 2. We've uh, even before, if you remember when we originally got into Station uh, 27, there was no gym. We didn't have the facilities, so they would rotate and go down to Station 2 and work out. And actually, Sea Isles Condominium was nice enough to let them play on the tennis courts. Obviously, that's not an option right now since they don't have a tennis court. But uh, they do have the opportunity to go to Station 2 and work out. Thank you. Nice work. Yep. So it's good. It's good to be in. Uh, next on my list is uh, we are still in the midst of uh, budget preparation. Everything's going good. Uh, you know, we hear one good thing, then we hear one bad thing. So it's, it's one of those things, uh, in case you haven't followed, the state of Florida did uh, budget, I think, $35 million to pay back special district cities who may have a shortfall. We are going to apply for that this year, which is in the neighborhood of 300 and some odd, 305,000 uh, dollars. Uh, tax collector and is that over and above the FEMA money? Yeah, yeah this is totally something totally yeah, separate. Yeah, I, th I, th I thought so. Applied, I just wanted so, yeah. to clarify that. For so yeah, it's it's different. It's different than the resilient lead at the yeah. 1.1 billion. This is something else that the state has done and put 35 million. So we have to wait for the tax collector to give us a form 5003, and we can submit the 5004 to the state after September 1st, before October 1st. So yeah, it's... Uh, but you well, once, you, once you do that, though, the money should come quickly, right? It should. It should. And Not I'll, like I'll give, FEMA. And, I'll give you, and it's from the state of Florida, and I'll give you a good example of that, that we received Friday a check for $24,000 and some change. For when we went and stood by at Fort Myers Beach with the USAR team and our backfill, we received a check for that Friday of $24,000. So, you know, less than a year later, we got that one. So um, I would venture a guess that when we apply and if it gets approved, which I don't see why it wouldn't get approved, we'll get it before June 1st of next year because they have to either they have to use the money or they have to reallocate it for the following year. And I don't know why they would reallocate it. Um, because it can be used and it can be uh, paid out. So our next meeting with you is the final budget workshop before the, uh, the hearings is August 29th at 3 p.m. in this room. Uh, the next thing I have on my uh, list is chamber event. Uh, they have changed it. It was supposed to be this Wednesday at Riptide. They have changed it now. It is August 30th on a Thursday at Riptide Brewing. So we got some time. If you uh, want to go, just let Anna Marie know that. Uh, also, if you notice in the agenda, the performance review was completed and submitted to the Attorney General. For those of you that may not remember about it, uh, two years ago, the state legislature, uh, probably politically incorrect, but we're picking on special districts, uh, us being one of them with the fire districts, mosquito well, just, control. It's hospital, another unfunded mandate. Another unfunded mandate that they have said that they want done. So we had till October 1st or June 30th, June 1st to submit it. Uh, we missed that deadline because of the hurricane. They said any district that was uh, infected by Hurricane Ian within 50 mile radius, we, we, got a st we could submit it whenever. Uh, our group submitted it uh, a month ago at the end of uh, June, so we missed it by 30 days. It has been submitted, uh, so we're just waiting and seeing. We're hoping through the Florida Association of Special Districts, the uh, Florida uh, Fire Chiefs Association, and the League of Counties and League of Cities, we can get this done with this year. It'll be a one and done. If not, we have to do it again in five years. And basically what you're doing is you're, you, we've set down our own parameters like, parameters like the uh, board wants us everywhere in Bonita Springs within four to six minutes, 90% of the time. That's one of our goals. So 
this company comes in and says, are you meeting those goals, that, these parameters that you've set forth? So they've done all that. They've come in and inter or we gave them all the numbers from the CAD system, from dispatch, from our training, from prevention and inspections, to uh, the uh, public education specialist, all those things. Fitch so, did a great job on that. I think it was like 29 pages or yeah. something, if I'm not mistaken. But so it, it, they did it, a really good job on it. So now uh, with that, we are still waiting on our standards of coverage, uh, AKA a facilities report. Uh, that is due by the end of this fiscal year. So we should be meeting with them and getting a, I guess you'd call it a draft proposal in the next couple of weeks. So that's with the performance review. Uh, next thing I have on there, just a reminder, uh, just a reminder that next month's meeting, since we have September 11th on Monday the 11th, our meeting is moved to September 12th. So our next meeting will be September 12th at, you know, five o'clock like before. Obviously, I'll remind everybody on the 29th that it is that day on our budget workshop. And the 11th is 530. 11 is 530. September 11th is 530. Uh, the big thing about the September 12th is that's the first budget hearing also. So that's where we'll accept the budget. We all got to make sure we're here for that one. Yeah, need at least three. Otherwise, bad things can happen. We don't want that. No, we don't want that. Uh, lastly, last thing, uh, myself, Chairman Lohan, uh, Assistant Chief Broad, and Deputy Chief Schmidt all met with TCG. It's a realty group. Uh, they come highly recommended. They, um, they do a lot of commercial work here. They do work for the school board. Uh, if you, you know, since we started, they helped us in the beginning. When we went to buy Station 7 or t Station 27 a year ago, they, they, they came by, uh, friends of people in church, recommended them, and they came by and like helped us out. They did a, you know, I guess you call it a market analysis to see are we, get, are we getting our money's worth for this. And they did. So we met with them. And they, they didn't charge us for that. No, they didn't charge us for any of this. It was, uh, like I said, they are very, um, very respectable. Like I said, they do work for school board. They do the work for a bunch of cities. Uh, they do work for City of Astero. They're a very impressive village. outfit, extremely um, so. With that being said, they, they have given us a proposal to, to deal with them. Um, we have it at the lawyers right now because we want to make sure we're make sure all the T's are crossed and dot, I's are dotted. Um, they feel that the property is worth in the neighborhood of $6 million, if not more, so we'll definitely get our, they are proposing that we get our money back again, but the market will, will bear that. Um, so what I'm looking for tonight is, is an approval for you guys as long as the lawyers have no problem with it or whatever the lawyers have a problem with, if it is fixed, to go ahead and enter into this agreement with TCG Group. We need a motion for that. So I'd like to have a mo motion for it in discussion. Uh, anybody want a second? I'll see. Do we, anybody want to talk about it? I do. Uh, before the consideration of the award, I would ask that the firm give us their best and final offer on the sales commission percentage. Uh, it, it's a, a standard 6%, and I believe that uh, this is something they may be able to do better on, someone else may be better to do on, but I'd like that under consideration before we make a final commitment. So this motion is going to die? No. This is a motion a second. That was a comment. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. It, but if the, if the motion's approved, we're going with them is what he's saying. Okay. So I, I, if, I, if I can say, so the way it sounds, you're okay with the motion, but you want us to at least go back to the drawing board one more try, time and try and get a better percentage other than 6%. Would it be best if I made an amendment to the motion? It sounds like he wants us to look at other people not them. necessarily look at other people but ask them to give their best and final offer on the percentage okay. they're asking us to take what is it, six? Six. it's pretty standard it is standard mm -hmm. matter of fact for commercial a lot of it's 10. i mean i, I do you need a separate motion no i mean because this, this we have a motion to approve okay we have we have a motion on the floor so we either Either a a friendly amendment to the motion or discussion, whichever one you want to do, Commissioner. If you want to amend the motion to say that you want something lower than six, or don't sign it, or do you just want to make the comment 
you would like myself and the chairman to go back and say, is this your best and final offer? Can we do better on the percentage? And if they say yes, great. If they say no, six is where we're at. I guess my question would be, are we still authorized to sign at that point? I would, I would like you to do that, and I guess it would take a, a motion to table until that is accomplished. That will delay it for another month before they start actively promoting it. Right. And uh, we've had the property since January, and this could be a significant amount of money if they're willing to cooperate. You know, it's, it, it's a, a pretty well-known fact that, that uh, we've got three realtors in my area. They never charge 6%. Well, to, to, to argue the other side of that, um, not that we owe them anything, but they did a significant amount of work for us uh, when we first went through this, and they didn't charge us a penny. And I almost feel it's the fact that they're not uh, they're not gouging us. And if you look at the proposal that they put together, and the work they're going to put in with the drones and the aerial, and how they're going to market this, um, I'm well, not sure that 100%. Well, I feel comfortable with asking them be, to take before it. we go any further. I've made a motion to table, and I need to know if there's a second. Okay. Well, motion here, dies. Motion dies. Um, we've got it. All in favor of accepting this proposal? Aye. 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 No. Thank you. Uh, and that's all I have. Okay. Nice job. Thank you. <clears throat> we've got all the other deputies and fire marshal reports in there. If anybody has any questions on those, nice job. If not, you're up, Alex. Uh, on the hazmat, a uh, couple comments. Uh, one, uh, uh, there was an article in Trains Magazine. I'm giving uh, the deputy chief and the chief a copy. But anyway, uh, basically there were five train cars uh, uh, that were, uh, had vinyl chloride on there, and that was a big problem. And that could have caused the deaths of the animals, etc. And anyway, I'll give you that. Uh, the next item uh, is, uh, pool chlorine. I don't know how many pool chlorine plants we have, but there was an incident reported in the uh, uh, American Chemical Society, of which I'm a member, uh, July 17th, about uh, the Chemical Safety Board, which is a federal situation, and uh, there was apparently a chlorine uh, uh, dryer thing. I'm not sure you've got, I'll give you the article, and I don't know what the procedures are, if, th if this affects anything in Lee or Collier counties, but if it does, I think you, you guys ought to know something, uh, you know, you ought to pass this information. To them. Okay, that was uh, the two items, and the other item, uh, uh, what concerns me and concerns you, uh, the chairman, uh, about the TECO gas. We don't have, we had, I remember years ago, we had an accident out, I was out, this was under Chief Gorley on US 41, and I was responded to that, and I don't know if you responded to that or not, but anyway, that was a mess, and uh, I'm surprised, shocked, shall I say, that there are some sh shut-off valves. What on earth? They got them. They don't know where they are. They have them? Yeah. And they don't know they where, don't they, know where they, are. they are? That's that's what my beef is. What? Yeah, there it is. It's out there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm speechless. It's his fault. Thank you. 
Motion to adjourn. Please.